walking the Stations of the Cross on Good Friday with McDougal United Church on April 2nd, 2021. This service has been adapted from the Northminster United Church Kids Zone program. And my name is Rachel Naden. Join us as we walk with Jesus. The walk through Holy Week is a long, sad journey filled with difficult emotions, but we make the journey with Jesus and look ahead of the joy of Easter Sunday and the resurrection. The Stations of the Cross are a special devotional prayer time to help us recall the tremendous love of Jesus. The Stations of the Cross are placed are a place to stop, a place to pause, a place to listen to the stories of the journey of Jesus. Our first station is of Palm Sunday. This is a special day in Jerusalem. Once a year, the Roman governor would come to town riding on a horse with lots of palm and ceremony. There would be a big parade and people would shout and wave and the sign that the Roman military might be unparalleled. But this particular day, hardly anyone was there to welcome the governor when he rode into town. He had a soldier with him and his chariots and lots of important looking people, but there were only a few people to wave and to shout. Most of the other people in town were on the other side of Jerusalem. They were welcoming someone else. There was someone riding into town on the very same day. Unlike the Roman Empire, this person didn't have a horse or chariots. He was riding a donkey. In Hebrew tradition, they had prophesied that their king would be riding on a donkey just as David had done before. But Jesus was a different kind of king. He didn't have soldiers and an important looking people with him. The followers of Jesus were men, women, and children. They were looking for a better way. Poor and sick people seeking a safe place. Those who were oppressed by Rome were looking for a new beginning. They had heard about Jesus, and the people were so excited to see him. They flocked on the streets and shouted happy things. In one of the stories about this day, the people took branches off the trees and waved because they wanted to wave something, anything to celebrate what Jesus was there, why Jesus was there. In another story, they laid their cloaks before him on the path, just as the Hebrew people had done in the times before the ancient kings. Please join me in saying a prayer. Holy Week begins with celebration and anticipation. The people through Jesus would bring peace and freedom. Take a moment to bring to mind celebrations of hope enjoy in your life and then remember those who are in need of peace and freedom. This is station two. It represents the last summer and Judas's betrayal. For the last supper, even though he knew it, the end was near, Jesus gathered with his closest friends to celebrate a special meal. They ate bread and wine and remembered how God was with them always. Then Jesus did something very special. He took the bread and the wine and he told his disciples these were like his body and his blood. Whenever they ate them again, they could remember that Jesus was with them. Ever since this time, Christians have gathered to share bread and the cup of wine or juice, and remember that wherever we are, Jesus is with us. We remember that Jesus lived and died in love, and we are also called to love each other. Please join me in prayer. 
As we remember the simple meal that Jesus shared with his, his disciples before they went out into the night, let us pray for those in our world who have to grab and go, fleeing war and violence around the world, and the homeless living in the streets, and those in the cold in search of a place for safety. Jesus be our guide, and Jesus guide us as we seek to respond to their need. The second part of the station talks about Judas's betrayal. Judas was one of Jesus' disciples. Over the last few months, he had gotten upset with Jesus. It seemed Jesus was always talking about how God loved all people, but Jesus thought there would be more. Judas had wanted Jesus to be more revolutionary, to overthrow the Roman government and put others in charge. But that was not Jesus' way. Jesus wanted people to change their hearts, to live and work in a community of love, caring for each other. Jesus knew that if he did that, we could change the world. So Judas decided to turn Jesus over to the Romans. Judas was the, at the Last Supper and ate with Jesus and the other disciples. During this meal, Jesus told them that one among them would betray him. And he, took, he looked right at Judas and told him to do what he must do. Judas slipped away early to alert the authorities. He hoped if they arrested him, Jesus would fight back. And the revolution that Judas wanted would begin. Later, when Judas realized they were going to kill Jesus, he went to the authorities and begged them to let Jesus go. I betrayed an innocent person, he, Judas said, but they refused. Please join me in prayer. This is the beginning of the end for Jesus. We all have times when we mourn what is ending, when we think all is lost. Remember those times and ask God to walk with you and give you the courage to live in hope in that a new day will rise. This is station three. This image is of the Garden of Getsman and Jesus gets rested. The first part is the Garden of Getsman. Jesus knew that a few, in a few hours, his life, <clears throat> Jesus knew that in the next few hours of his life, they were going to be very hard. He knew his way of love was a threat to the government and the religious leaders that he would be arrested. He took the disciples with him to the Garden of Getsemane and then asked Peter, James, and John to watch while he found a quiet place to pray. Jesus prayed, God, this is the last thing I want. If there is any way, please take this bitter cup from me. Not my will, but yours will be done. When Jesus went back to his disciples, he found that he had fallen asleep. Jesus was disappointed, and he asked them why they couldn't watch for just one hour. He went and prayed a second time. God, if there is no other way for this cup to pass without my drinking it, then not my will, but yours be done. Again, when he was done, he found the disciples once more sleeping. He prayed once more and then went back. You're still sleeping. Get up. The time has come. Here come our betrayers. And suddenly the disciples were wide awake. Please join us in prayer. Even though Jesus was in tune with God, 
he still found it hard to face the journey to the cross. And yet, though he asked for God to relieve him of this difficult path, he gave himself to God's future. We all carry burdens that are hard to face. We have all had times we wanted to avoid the pain and suffering. Remembering those times, release them to God and God's best. Pray that you would have the strength to stay awake with those who are suffering and journey with them through their pain. The story continues as Jesus is arrested. The biggest problem the Jewish religious authorities and the Roman government had was that they didn't have any real evidence to convict Jesus because he hadn't really done anything wrong. Jesus had spent all his time helping people who found lost and alone and people who were sick and hurting. He made them feel special and reminded them that God loved everyone, no matter what. But he also questioned the way things were all, always done. He got angry when the rules hurt people, and he kept them from knowing God is love. So when Judas told them that they would find Jesus in the Garden of Getsemane, in the dark, they found their chance. Judas, the chief of priests, the elders, and the others who were threatened by Jesus' message came to the garden with swords and clubs ready to arrest Jesus. Some of them had heard of Jesus, but didn't know what he looks like. Judas had told them he would give them a signal, so we went up to Jesus and gave him a kiss on the cheek. One of the followers of Jesus took a sword and tried to fight back. He sliced off the ear of one of the servants who were with the priests. But Jesus told them to put away their swords. That was not his way. He asked those who gathered against him, why did you bring these weapons, these clubs, these bats? Did you think I would fight you? that I would try to dodge and escape like a common criminal? You could have arrested me any day when I was teaching in the temple, but you didn't. At that, the crowd arrested him and took him to the temple to stand trial. And all the disciples ran away. Please join me in prayer. No one can ever wipe away the sadness of that awful day. There are others in our world who are a threat to people in charge. Pray that they would find justice and peace. Pray that you can be kind to all people who don't quite fit in, who seem like a threat to the authorities because they seek a better way. Pray that you will find the grace of those who don't, you don't understand. This is station four. Peter denies knowing Jesus, and Jesus is condemned to death. We begin as Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends. He loved the stories and the lessons Jesus taught and the things Jesus did. He knew there was something special about Jesus, so his connection to God. But Peter got scared easily. He found it hard to trust that God would always be with him, no matter what. Peter was used to being in charge and making things happen, but he didn't know what to do when Jesus got arrested. Some people had a fire going inside the courtyard, just outside the place where Jesus was having a mock trial. Peter joined them so he could warm his hands and keep his eyes on what was happening. One of them said, you were with Jesus. Peter got scared and said, no, that wasn't me. I don't know anyone called Jesus. This happened a few more times. And then the rooster crowed. 
Peter remembered Jesus saying, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter felt ashamed. They had not supported his friend. and He went outside to cry. Please join me in prayer. We have all been scared to stand up for what is right. We have all felt ashamed that we did not stay with our friend through their toughest times, that we let fear keep us away. Pray that we would have the courage to stand with all those who are being treated unjustly. Pray that God would be with us even when our friends need to be with them in their difficult times. This story continues with Jesus when he is condemned to death. When the morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conspired together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They tried to get Jesus to confess to crimes he didn't commit. But Jesus didn't say anything. He knew they wouldn't believe him anyway. He knew that they were angry because he was turning the world upside down. The poor, the sick, the women, the children, all the people who had been pushed aside, all that the places, all had places at the table Jesus had set. But they could not find fault with him. So they bound him, led him away. They handed him over to Pilate of Rome, Pilate, the Roman governor of Jerusalem and Judah. They knew Rome would deal with Jesus better than they could. That they had gathered against Jesus. Pilate also couldn't find anything that Jesus had done wrong. But this time, there was an angry crowd that had gathered against Jesus. Pilate stood before the people and asked them, What should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And the people said, let him be crucified. He offered to crucify Barbas instead, a notorious criminal. But still, the people of Jesus, the people said of Jesus, crucify him. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather a riot was beginning, he handed Jesus over to be crucified. Please join me in prayer. It isn't fair. I wanted to cry when Jesus was condemned to die. There are so many things in our world that are unjust and unfair, that hurt people who have done nothing wrong. There are many people who don't understand what is really going on and want to cancel or erase people who they don't agree with. It is so easy to follow the mob to an unjust end. Pray that you would have the wisdom to listen and learn and the strength to stand up to the bullies. This is station five. This image, Jesus is carrying the cross and the people are meeting him on the road. So they took Jesus and forced him to carry a cross by himself, the cross that would be cru- he would be crucified on. It was a heavy to carry and covered with slivers. Jesus was pushed along the dusty road by the guards and by the crowds who were yelling insults at him. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, which the Hebrews called Gothnia. Please join me in prayer. Worries, sickness, problems, care, or crosses that I am asked to bear. Jesus, help me every day, as by your cross you lead the way. He carried the cross through the streets of Jerusalem along a path that is now called the Via Dolorosa, or the Sorrowful Way. Soon the cross was too heavy for him, so Simon, a Syrian, was forced to carry it 
to Galicia. Many people were following Jesus and the cross, and among them were women who were beating their chests and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and told them not to weep for him, but to weep for themselves and for their children, because days were coming that would surely test them and bring grief and sadness. When that happened, they would wish their children hadn't been born, and the mountains would fall on them. Jesus was foretelling the destruction of the Jerusalem, destruction of Jerusalem and the temple at the hands of the Romans, which was to come. Please join me in prayer. Sometimes it's more difficult to watch while someone we love suffers. We have all wished we could carry their crosses. Pray that you will be the strength for the ones who you love, who are going through difficult times. Pray that you can carry them and their crosses, even if there is no happy ending. This is station six. Jesus is nailed to the cross and Jesus takes care of his mother. Jesus was sentenced by the Roman governor to die by crucifixion and being nailed to a cross. But before they did that, the soldiers in charge beat him and laughed at him. The crowd got excited and shouted for Jesus to be killed. Some of the people in charge were not so sure, but they didn't want to upset the crowds. And so they went along with it. Jesus was crucified between two criminals, one of them being mocked, began to mock him, saying, Are you not the chosen one? Save yourself and us. But the other one reminded him that they were criminals who deserved to be punished. But Jesus had done nothing wrong. He asked Jesus to remember him when everything was put right. Jesus told him, this is the very day he would be with him in paradise. Please join me in prayer. Hands and feet, heart and head, hurt by thorn and sword and nail. Nail my hands and heart instead, must serve you daily without fail. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his, were his mother and his mother's sister and Mary, the wife of Galapas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple who he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her on to his home to be part of the family. There were also women looking on from a distance who were the followers and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. They were all the witnesses of the crucifixion. Since all but one of the disciples had abandoned him. Please join me in prayer. The woman cried for Jesus that day, cried for injustice, the pain, the loss. We released our tears for all the injustice, pain, and loss in our world and pray that we be conformed, comforted to all who are suffering. This is station seven. Jesus died on the cross and Jesus is buried in a tomb. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At some point, the curtain of the temple tore in two. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a very loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
When Jesus, Jesus knew the end was near, he said, I am thirsty. So they put a sponge full of wine vinegar on a branch and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, God, into your hands, I commend my spirit. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Some of the guards who had hurt Jesus were amazed by how quiet it had been and how he did not fight back. They began to realize this man really was the son of God. They felt ashamed and sorrowful for what they had done. Please join me in prayer. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is such a hard thing to say. We want to hang on them all the hurt and the pain. We find it is so hard to just let go. Pray that you will have the courage to release your burdens to God, to believe God is through all, to hope in a new beginning. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Erismia named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had carved into the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Please join me in prayer. What looks like the end is just the beginning. Go in silence and remember the road to Easter is paved with pain and sorrow. Sit in the reality as you wait for the Easter joy. Amen.